I grieve for you and for the loss of your son. Maybe another victim of my people. Smallpox. For sure. Smallpox? Well, you're gonna have to burn everything this boy's touched. Burn his blankets, and his clothes. And you're even gonna have to burn down this teepee. It is possible that the white man's discovered some kind of remedy, cure. Remedy? Something to make your people strong. You will have to trade with the white man. I have never traded with the white man. Well, I ain't asking you to trade for trade's sake. I'm asking you to save your people. Who will save us from the white man? In the summer of 1840, a smallpox epidemic wiped out over half of the Blackfoot nation. I was a young woman then, and this country was known as the Indian Territory. 49 years later, after the wagon trains had moved westward, and the cowboys arrived with their herds of cattle and pushed the buffalo off of the grasslands, it was to become the state of Montana. This big sky country belonged to the eagle, the elk, the buffalo, and the bear. The people here were as much a part of the land as the wind and the sun. Looking north is Canada, where the aloof and proud Blackfoot tribes blended like shadows into the landscape. generations they have told around their campfires the legend of a great young chief of the Blackfoot and of a white girl I was that girl and the Blackfoot chief was called Winterhawk Because his people were in deadly peril, Winterhawk was forced to ride to the white man's camp. The only white people in this country then were mountain men and a few missionaries. Some of the mountain men, like Winterhawk's friend Elkhorn Guthrie, married Indian women and built strong bonds of friendship with the tribe. Back then, Winterhawk was probably the most mysterious Indian in the West. 
even to the Indians. No white man but Guthrie had ever seen him. We'd heard of Winterhawk, but there was some doubt he really existed. It was said by the Indians that this legendary and mysterious young chief, riding like the wind on his spotted white horse, was a messenger of the spirits. That he could smell like a wolf, run like an antelope, and see like an eagle. The furs he trapped were said to be the finest in the land. Brother Cotton and I had come west with our uncle, Will Finley, who was a missionary and a trader. He was taking us to join our father. The yearly fur rendezvous was a big event in our lives, where all the people for a hundred miles around gathered to trade and enjoy each other's company. Thank you. 
Cheers. Welcome. Okay. Good, sir. No to to. A kitua. No to to. A kitua. Good, sir. Good, sir. I don't know what he is. But if my guess is right, he's Blackfeet. Anybody here speak Blackfeet? Anybody here speak Blackfeet? Yeah, I know a little of the tongue. Okay, Nascani. Okay. I. Come to get medicine. Trade. For cure. Medicine. Remedy. Well, now the cure and the remedy for what? S small. Smallpox. Well, uh, we can't help you here, but him and me, we know a man that lives over there that maybe he can help you. If you'll just come with us, we'll take you over and talk with him. That be all right? You just follow along behind us, kind of. Hang back a little, though. sound of gunfire, we knew something had happened in the woods. Watching the young chief on his magnificent horse as he raced away, I heard someone say, it's got to be the one they call Winterhawk.
after the sound of his hoofbeats had faded in the distance and the shock of those murderous shots had passed, the sight of him riding away stayed in my thoughts. Bits of stories I had heard about Winterhawk came to mind, and I wondered, how did this man exert such power by his mere presence? It gave me a very strange feeling. I want you going out no more at night alone. Especially after what happened today. I'm all right. Uncle Will, who is Monahawk? I don't know. He's the son of Chief Red Cap, and that gives him pretty high breeding. So? So, if it means what I think it means, he'll be back. You mean he'll be back for Gates and Scobie? I figure he'll locate us long before he does Gates or Scobie when you found those two dead braves. Was there any sign which way Gates and Scobie headed? It looked like to me they headed down the river. I can smell him. I wish she was heading downwind. <laughs> son. And I say we go after Gates and Scobie. And turn them over to Winterhawk. That might work. But I don't think Winterhawk's gonna be too particular about who he gets even with. Of course I do, Cotton. You don't believe he's an old man with a long white beard, do you? <laughs> no, I don't. Then what is he? Oh, gosh, Cotton. That's gonna be hard for you to understand. He's, uh, everything. And he knows all about you. He judges what's in a man's heart. Like our pa? No. No, not exactly like our pa. Although our pa is a great man of God, but God is a force. He's, he's a power. He's the creator of everything that's good. But does he protect us? Well, of course he protects us. Come on.
someone comes. I ain't asking you to do this for nothing. I've got a little money, and I'm willing to pay you for the loss of time. Well, what do I need with money? What could money possibly buy me that I ain't already got? You just look around you here. I got shelter. I got fresh meat on this table almost every day. And uh, all the loving a man my age could possibly stand. No, you ain't looking at a man in want, Mr. Finlay. And besides, he's my friend. What does that mean? Who's your friend? We know. You think he's apt to hurt him, Guthrie? No, no, I think they'll be well treated. They'll be raised as black feet, most likely become members of the tribe. Well, Clayal is a mature woman. Besides, a... she ugly? On the contrary. Well, then you got no problem. Winterhawk don't like her, some big buck will take a shine to her, make her a squall. You are an Indian lover. That's right. You knew that before we brought you up here. Looks like what we got here is a matter of pride. Pride? Pride, hell. Every one of you knows that Finley's got a little money, and you just think you might have a chance to get your hands on some of it. You ain't worried about no boy and girl. All right. I'll go with you. But not because of your damn pride or because of your money. Hey, Flower, give me some more stew. Now, I'm going with you because I kind of feel responsible for all this. I sent Winterhawk down there to trade for a cure. And I didn't have sense enough to go along with him and see there would be no trouble. And that's why I'm going. What does he want with us? My uncle will pay you in trade goods to get us back. Don't you quit, sis. He don't understand nothing. Dakayo keep. Sapuake. Zipoi. Winterhawk not steal for money. What then? He take you and boy. Because white man steal from him. Supuaka, supuchisaka, mape koan, e este supuaka, aksumaka, e tapuap, 
Mr. Kish. What's the matter with him? The white man is following. But he must turn back. Don't you worry, Cotton. They're coming. They'll catch up to us. Way before he can get us into that high country. Now weeks had passed since Cotton and I had been taken captive. I had expected the worst. But so far, we had been treated fine. Of course, the hard riding from dawn's first light to evening's darkness, and the rough food, which was normal for them, was very hard on little Cotton and me. You're lucky here. Feet? Crow, maybe? 
Oh, I think Blackfeet. <laughs> yeah. You know how to cook, do you? Yeah, well, won't you just fix us up a little meal? Because uh, I like to eat first. What ain't I done, Scope? You ain't had no loving. That's right, ain't it, Duke? That's right, ain't it? That's right. I knew I'd overlook something. Guthrie ain't gonna be back. He ain't back for now. He won't be back. It's just you and me and her. Ain't it, Gates? You missed it. No! <laughs> 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 Get that loaded. All right, let's move it, Jughead. You didn't have to kill her. said, let's go. Go. Hold him there. 
Please, no cunt. How many? Here's with five. Two others follow. One day behind. We will fight. Guthrie is wise man. He will not bring white men on our land. Guthrie, he thinks like a Blackfeet. He is still a white man. He will follow. Should man fight his brother? I do not listen to myself. I listen to Winterhorn. Take two. Stop Guthrie. And if Guthrie dies, then it is the way it must be. I ain't never seen anything like this before. No, no, me neither. Maybe it's a trap. Gotta be. We had become so burned by the wind and sun, it was hard to tell Cotton and me from the Indians. But weeks of hard travel had left us bone weary. Now I was frightened and worried that Uncle Will or some of the men might be injured or killed because it had been several days since Winter Hawk had sent his braves to stop them. Suddenly, there was one of the braves coming down river. Lost two brothers. Guthrie? He has lost one.
to describe how I felt when I watched him cut little Cotton's hands free. deeper into the wilderness of Canada. Great flights of geese often darkened the sky as they flew southward, and the chill winds that moaned through the trees at sunset warned us of the cold winter coming. I was determined to try once more to persuade Winterhawk to let us go. I want to talk with him. If he will let my brother and me go, he will be rewarded. If Winterhawk does not free us, more white men will follow him. You must understand, there are many more white men than Blackfeet. As chief, he must not allow two white men's mistakes to bring such suffering to his people. He comes away for talking on OKM. Winterhawk must be greater than his enemies. He must forgive them. Send us home. Esuk Sipoyi Napiaki Mataxi Metua Mapiquax. Akesumo non este achis tutu kenan. Speak well for a white woman, but he does not believe in your words, as the white man has strangled the Indian with words. Well, I'll tell you, there ain't nothing the equal of a full stomach. Wouldn't you say so, Finley? Nothing's happening out there. Good. Finley, you enjoy this while you can. You trying to tell me something? Which way are we heading? North. <laughs> well, I'll be. Now, that's a good guess. <laughs> hey, we're heading north. We're following Winterhawk. And his people are migrating south after their food supply. He's coming on the end of fall. It'll soon be winter. That means less food and a hell of a lot of snow and cold. Could be spring before we overtake Winterhawk. Hey, <laughs> now there's another good guess. Unless Winterhawk decides to turn around and overtake us. We already lost two Braves, maybe even a third. So from now on, anything that moves is more than likely a black feet. Let's get some shut eye. Oh, Lil Smith. Would you mind sleeping down me? Why? Why? Well, because I have smelled this damn thing you got around your neck about all I intend to smell it. That's why. Well, Mr. Guthrie, you might do well by yourself if you was to wear one. <laughs> this is my life bag. And it's kept me alive in these mountains all these years. Lil Smith, would you mind telling us just what in the world you got in that thing? Uh, well, I'm, mm, I couldn't do that. Because, you see, it's kind of... It's kind of personal. All you're gonna know is I ain't gonna take it off. 
and I'm gonna keep right on living and surviving in these here mountains. Well, you sleep downwind so we can survive the night. <laughs> my bath and I'm gonna dry off and go finish my breakfast and take a nap. You know something, Little Smith? You just flat out stink. Surely you ain't talking about me. I just finished my bath. Now. <laughs> <laughs> Something. I don't know what to say. Your springs shall be less green, your winters more severe. Your enemies shall grow stronger. 
For lo, a great strength has gone out. He was a hell of a mountain man, sir. We had learned that the warrior believes that the plains are afloat in mysterious space and that the winds blow straight from heaven. This boundless land inspires visions and dreams. And wrapped in a cloak of mystery, as he retreated into his thoughts, we watched, fascinated, but a little fearful of what action would follow his meditations. The persistence of Elkhorn Guthrie, who we now knew led Uncle Will and the mountain men, was obviously giving him grave concern. He seemed to be staring across the mists of time, listening to whispered voices riding on the long winds that stirred the thousands of miles of grassland with the changing seasons. Eat up the full line. Hey, perhaps you. But, hey, what? A couple more days, we'll be in snow country, huh? Eh, yeah, sure looks that way. And we can sell these furs, find us a place, and hold up for the winter. Blackfoot country? Why not? It's on the other side. Still the side's Canada, ain't it? Yeah. You're in trouble there, ain't you? Yeah, but, uh, I'm going to forgive them if they'll forgive me. <laughs> yeah! Ah, was an old lady. Oh. Howdy.
Been after that boy all summer to fix that. Yeah. Fine quality. The best. Where'd you get them? I didn't. He did. Where'd you get him? He can't talk. He's a deaf mute. I don't suppose he can write, either. No. They all say I pay top dollar in this country. That's why we're here. Pass is still open up north. Bridges had some snow. Johnson's still clear. Crossing into Canada? Oh, well, I don't know. I'm with him and he ain't told me yet. Let's do business. Kluskies. Come on, Mr. Friendly. <laughs> Come on, go back. Bunch of furs with your wife's mark on it. I reckon you're not far behind. My wife's mark on it? What the hell are you talking about? Two white men come in early this morning. Not only had them furs, but they's packing a pinto. And I swear it looked like a twin of pale flowers. One of them is short. One of them is kind of tall. One of them didn't have much to say. Guthrie, one of them is meaner than hell. Which way? I told him Johnson's pass is clear. I watched him pull out for you, Guthrie. That's where they was hidden. Where is he? Johnson's pass. Johnson, we just got here. McCluskey, my name's Will Finley. I'm looking for a band of Blackfeet led by one they call Winterhawk. They took my niece and my nephew. Have you seen or heard of them in these parts? Heard of him. But I ain't seen him. Very few white men have. What are you trying to do, Guthrie? Kill us and the horses? I'll start a fire. No fires. Just freeze it. Fires can be seen. You wait here. Try to put it in the cup, and not on me this time. You reckon we got a good price on those hides? Yeah. Oh. Just think we got enough for that pento. Yeah. Yeah, 
Elkar and Guthrie? That's right. I seen your fire. I thought I might join you. I could sure use a cup of that coffee. Ah. <laughs> well, you must be part Indian, sneaking in on us like that. Uh, oh, thank you. Hey, Gates, who's your friend? Scoby. S Scoby Glass. separated from my party. I, I've been tracking a couple of thieves. <clears throat> you two, you're pretty far north. What you doing? Oh. <laughs> Just kind of mind their business. <sighs> Meaning I ain't. Oh, no? I mean anything. Bless your business is my business. I didn't see him. I didn't touch her. I didn't even look at her. I swear on my mother's grave. You never had a mother. You pick, pick him up. I said pick him up. What are you going to do with me? I don't know. It'll be something special. That Guthrie's crazy. We're getting so far back in these mountains, if we don't starve to death, we'll freeze. Well, I don't even have a fat squaw to keep me warm. Well, even those Indians are better than off than us. I hear they got a good-looking woman with them. <laughs> don't you talk about my niece that way, you scoundrel. Let me take care of this for you, Mr. Finley. He smarts off at you one more time, you'll be preaching his funeral. My pony gonna be all right? Your pony be fine. Snow make pain go away. Your pony strong. Winterhawk? You got a wife? Do you any ma? Kitak. Kinipa. Winterhawk. Have no woman. Died many seasons ago. Anistis. Dakomapi. Nokoa. Ik tutinim. Ik tini. Napikwan. What talks it? Winterhawk, say, tell you, with hair like snow. He once had son who was fast like the wind and curious like you. He, like his mother, 
died of white man's disease. Mihawk? I'm sorry. you back just in time for evening prayers dear Lord we thank thee for thy bounties and for seeing us through another day without harm we ask thee to be merciful for Sis, those. He ain't married. Cotton Finley. Now you be quiet and finish your prayers. Dear Lord, we ask you to watch over us, to deliver us from evil, and to return us safely home. Amen. Go to sleep. <sighs> How did you know? Hmm? How did you know he wasn't married? I told you he was my friend. So I asked him for you. Young man, from now on I'll do my own asking. Good night. Bitter and endless cold. The icy winds cut like a knife. And the creeping numbness of our bodies made going on almost unbearable. For the life of me, I don't see how little cotton kept going. We were lost in a white world. And I watched horses struggle through the deep snow gasping for breath in the thin air. Hunger hovered over us like a dark vulture. And I wondered, when, when will it all end? What's happened to Big Root? Been away a long time now. Never knowed him to get lost before. Oh, he knows the country. He'll be along. Well, I'd like to know is why you're doing this. Well, Gates is my friend. Well, I got a right to know. You got no rights at all. Well, you could give him a decent burial. I give him nothing. Better keep moving, Guthrie.
child, my son. Guthrie Valos. Guthrie? But let him understand. He is your brother. The white man, not trade. Take furs. We have no medicine. Now Guthrie leads them against us. Guthrie, he follows because of woman and boy. The people are dying. They have white man sickness. They need your strength, my son. Do not bring more trouble. I not give back boy and woman. Well, what you do with them? Trade for medicine. Now, they are my strength. This will not save face. It will only lead to more killing. It is not my wish. You have said many times, it is better for man to die in battle than die of old age or sickness. When I was young like you, my son, I said many things. Now that I am old, I have many scars to show for my quick words. Rest, my son. We will talk later. Got something to trade. Come on, old man. Come on. Keep walking. Come on. Straighten up.
that Indian wants us to turn back. We better do it, Guthrie, before they burn him anymore. <laughs> you get Little Smith's long rifle and you try a shot at him. Never reach. You get it, man. You fill that long rifle full of powder. You try. At least try, man. You can do what you wanted to be. When you bought this car, you know that little boy. I'll come out of hell to get you. Children, I see the children. Thank God they're alive. Scoby, you come with me. Me? Why me? I ain't no good at talking. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Friendly's a talker. <laughs> Take him. You pick up that pack horse. You bring your friend with you. Coming, I'm coming. Hot. Come back. Please come back. Yeah, not be quiet. betrayed him. I bring him the two men who cheated him. Guthrie, you ain't human. No white man would turn over one of his own kind of bunch of savages. Boy and woman for medicine. No medicine, no trade. Well, I ain't leaving without him. Then we fight.
him? My warriors will not honor him with death. I don't want him neither. Copy. Hand me the range of the pack horse. Come on. Ah, oh, now you throw him off. Get him off. Give me your coat. What? I said, give me your coat. Suddenly I realized what I had to do. That it was my life, and only I could choose the path I would travel. 
I knew Cotton would be all right. I was not to see my brother again for many years, till he was grown with a family of his own. I and Winterhawk melted into the forest and the mountains, and the howl of the coyote echoing in the moonlit canyons became our music, and the wail of the wind and the cry of the Winterhawk, our song. Oh, 